Hi, boys and girls. Miss Linda here with our next seven minute Sunday school lesson. Uh, today's lesson is on Esther, Queen Esther, and selflessness. Well, Esther wasn't always a queen. She actually was an orphan girl who didn't have any parents. Her mom and dad had died, and she was adopted by her, her uncle Mordecai. And Mordecai and Esther were Jews uh, with a whole bunch of other Jews who'd been taken away from their homeland to the land of Persia. And while they were there, King Xerxes was looking for a queen. And so he went out and he gathered, he had his, well, he had his servants go out and gather all the pretty girls that were not married and bring them to the palace. And they went through some special treatments where they were given some special fruits and vegetables to help them be nice and healthy. And they were got to put special lotions on their skin to make it all nice and, and smooth and soft. And um, while, queen, while Esther was there, the king then, you know, looked at all these pretty girls and he chose Esther to be his new queen. And she was just a normal, ordinary girl. Well, while she was in the palace, while she was being queen, her uncle sent her a message to let her know that a law had been passed by, by a man, Hanan, who was a, who was a worker for the king. And he tricked the king into thinking that the Jews were bad people and that they needed to be all killed. And then here's where our story picks up of the Esther's special part in history is that um, it comes from chapter four of Esther and it starts at verse eight and goes through verse 17. Well, Mordecai, her uncle, received a copy of the order. It commanded people to wipe out the Jews. The order had been sent from Susa. Mordecai told Hathak, who was a servant, uh, of the king to show the order to Esther. He wanted him to explain it to her and he told him to try to get her to go to the king. He wanted her to beg for mercy. He wanted her to make an appeal to the king for her people who were the Jews. When Hathak went back, went back and he reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther directed him to give an answer to Mordecai. She told him to say, there is a certain law that everyone knows about. All of the king's officials know about it. The people in the royal territories know about it. It applies to any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courtyard but without being sent for. It says that they must be put to death. But there is one way out. Suppose the king reaches out his gold rod, which we call a scepter, toward, towards them then their lives will be spared. But 30 days have gone by since the king has sent for me. Well, Esther's words were reported back to Mordecai. And then, when, then he sent back an answer. And he said, you, Esther, live in the king's palace. But don't think that just because you are there, that you will be spared and be the only Jew who will escape. What if, what if you don't say anything at this time? Then help for the Jews will come from another place, but you and your family will die. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for just a time like this. So then Esther sent a reply back to Mordecai. She said, go gather all of the Jews that are in Susa and fast for my benefit. Don't eat or drink anything for three days. Don't do it day or night. I and my attendants will fast just as you do. Then I'll go to the king and I'll do it even though it's against the law. And if I have to die, I'll die. So Mordecai went away and he carried out all of Esther's directions. Well, what happened was that the, they did this and Esther did go before the king and he did reach out his royal scepter or that royal, that that golden rod. And so her life was spared. So she got to go to the king and she was smart. She didn't ask immediately for the king to spare her people because he didn't know they were her people. Instead, she used that as an opportunity to ask the king to come to a special dinner. And then she actually did this twice. And at the second dinner, then she uh, asked the king to spare her people. And she told him that, you know, these are my people. And so if you kill them, it's like killing my family. And so the king made a new law that said the Jews could fight back. And so Esther saved her people, that she was an ordinary girl that was chosen by the king to be her queen. So she was right there at that special place 
just just the right time when God needed her for a very special purpose. And boys and girls, God made all of you special and every one of you have your own special purpose. And God wants us to just give our lives to him of saying, I'll do what you want me to do, God. And one of the hardest things to do is to be like Esther, be selfless. Because see, it's normal, ordinary human nature that we want to put us first, me and others second. And God wants us to turn that around. He wants us to put others first, to think of them and then to think of ourselves. He wants good things for us too, but he knows that the way we can make the world a better place and people better people is by us treating them the way we want to be treated. So by putting other people first of doing kind things for them without being asked, with not getting paid for it, not getting a special price for it, that is being selfless like Queen Esther. So let us pray. Dear God, Be with these boys and girls and just help them to love you first. And then you will show them how to love other people and to be selfless and just kind and good people of doing the things that you want them to do. Give them an extra special blessing. In Jesus name we pray. We love you and God loves you too. Bye-bye boys and girls.